Welcome to Style Lessons, following 11 key lessons in style, the basics of clarity and grace. My name is Dr. Burkett. Today I will discuss and illustrate how to make connections that create cohesion and coherence in writing. Cohesion and coherence both derive from Latin cohere, an infinitive meaning to connect. Cohesion refers to connections at the clause and sentence levels, while coherence is connections at the paragraph and argument levels. A puzzle metaphor is helpful. Think of cohesion as connecting sentences together the way individual pieces of a jigsaw puzzle fit together. Then think of coherence as seeing what all of the sentences of a piece of writing add up to, the way all the pieces of a puzzle add up to a big beautiful picture painted on the box. This style lesson discusses and illustrates how to connect the pieces together at the sentence level and the paragraph level. The first key term is cohesion. Cohesion results in the sense of flow of how individual clauses and sentences, like uh, pieces of a puzzle, fit together as moving from familiar to new information. Writers have an old new contract with their readers. So write old familiar information before new and unfamiliar information. Arrange sentences in some orderly scheme with some transitions. Readers experience cohesive flow when sentences start with familiar information, such as a familiar grammatical subject, familiar point of view, familiar transition, and familiar topic introduced in the prior sentence. Sentences are cohesive when the last few words of one sentence set up information that appears in the first few words of the next sentence. That's what gives us our experience of flow. So to improve cohesion, writers should place familiar information first in each sentence, such as making familiar characters the subjects of sentences. Then as a helpful practice, writers should number their main points, such as first, second, third, and so forth, to create order, transitions, and flow among sentences. Let's recognize some problems in cohesion. What is the problem with this series of sentences? The point student writers must understand is that the research essay addresses an interpretive or conceptual problem. C.S. Lewis puzzles literary, literary critics by how he depicts human choice in light of original sin and bondage of the will. Theorists in every field must address the central problem in one way or another of the human condition. Well, first we need to diagnose what causes the sentences to be incohesive and thus harder to understand than necessary. The sentences do not flow because new information is not introduced in prior sentences. The sentences violate the old before new principle of cohesion. And there are no transitions to signal relationships. Well, when we analyze it, we ask, what are the best solutions? Well, we can apply our principles, begin sentences with old familiar information mentioned in the prior sentence, and then we can revise by rewriting the sentence. Here is my revised series of sentences with improved cohesion or sense of flow. The point student writers must understand is that the research essay addresses an interpretive or conceptual problem. The problem in C.S. Lewis, for instance, is how Lewis depicts human choice in light of original sin and bondage of the will, a problem that puzzles literary critics. And one way or another, writers in every field must address the central problem of the human condition. Well, unlike the original series of sentences, these sentences flow for three reasons. Each sentence begins with familiar information, either a general term like student writers, or a key term introduced in the prior sentence, like conceptual problem introduces problem, and literary critics introduces the close synonym writers, which the first sentence also introduces. Beginning new sentences with familiar information creates the experience of flow for readers. Second, each sentence ends with new information that writers cannot predict. New information keeps the sentences advancing and interesting and readers interested. Third, some sentences have transitions to signal relationships, such as narrowing focus, like for instance, and generalizing expansion, like in one way or another. 
Our second key term is coherence. Coherence results in a sense of the whole paragraph or argument, like how various puzzle pieces fit together to form a single multifaceted picture. Coherence is created by four elements. First, consistent subject topic strings. It is best to select one point of view and stick with it, selecting one or two characters or topics to act in the subject position of sentences, whether those subjects are real, virtual, or general characters. Second, common themes. Sentences should focus on one topic per paragraph. Third, parallel structures. Parallelism binds together and shows similar information. And fourth, topic sentences. One sentence should state what the paragraph is all about. And perhaps fifth is to avoid distractions like meta discourse or getting off topic. For coherence suffers whenever a draft shifts confusingly from one point of view to another or from one verb tense to another or from one grammatical subject to another uh, in the various sentences. Readers gain a sense of the coherent whole when all sentences in a passage begin with similar information such as consistent and thus familiar grammatical subjects, point of view, and theme or topic, all under the heading of a topic sentence that orients the reader to what the passage is about. Thus, to create coherent paragraphs, writers should give the passage consistent subject topic strings, that is, uh, make the topic or part of the topic the grammatical subject of most sentences in a paragraph. Writers usually do this by choosing consistent characters and making those main characters the subjects of most sentences. This pra practice applies the principles of clarity learned in the prior two lessons of style. Let's recognize other problems. What is wrong with this paragraph? Cohesion or coherence? Southern California is a surfing capital where brave surfers head to the beach at all hours of the day during the four seasons, especially summer. Summertime is the best time to visit baseball parks and watch crazy frisbee dogs in the pregame show jump 10 feet high to catch the spinning disc. These objects cause me anxiety due to recent reports of flying saucers, aliens, and interdimensional portals. I have always wanted to travel, but my therapist discourages it due to my anxiety disorder. Well, the individual sentences in this paragraph are cohesive, but incoherent and thus rather crazy for four reasons. First, grammatical subjects of the sentences are unrelated. The sentences share no common themes or topics. The sentences have no parallel structures. And the paragraph has no topic sentence that states what the passage is about. Here is my revised paragraph with improved coherence. Southern California is a surfing capital where brave surfers head to the beach at all hours of the day during all four seasons, especially summer. Late summer is the best season to surf because storms in the South Pacific kick up waves 20 feet high, attracting surfers and spectators alike. Surfers enjoy the thrilling challenge of these big waves, the skill and courage required to navigate them, and the sense of being dwarfed by nature, both beautiful and dangerous in its rolling energy. Consequently, Californians are attracted to surfing for the sport, spectacle, and enjoyment of nature. Well, this passage is now coherent for four reasons. First, the grammatical subjects of sentences are related, specifically these subjects, Southern California, brave surfers, summer, storms, surfers, and Californians. These relatively few and related subjects create a consistent perspective that help tell the story and hold the paragraph together. Second, the sentences share a common theme or topic. Readers see this topic immediately in the sentence's key words and grammatical subjects. Third, the sentences have some parallel structures to connect and show similar ideas and information. Parallelism is treated in style lessons 9 and 10. Fourth, the paragraph has a topic sentence introducing the passage. The topic sentence is usually the first sentence, as in this case, but may be the second sentence of a paragraph. Not only is the passage coherent, but its sentences have a sense of cohesive flow due to our three familiar causes. Each sentence begins with familiar information. Each sentence ends with new information. Some sentences have 
transitions to signal relationships. For instance, the last sentence starts with consequently, signaling inference and conclusion. Skillful writers not only show connections, but also relationships between sentences by providing transitions to alert readers to simple sentence level functions and more global paragraph level relationships among ideas and logic in the development of a paragraph or argument. Various functions of sentences, or the work they do, include to show addition, to give examples, to compare, to contrast, to conclude, to show time, to show direction, and to indicate logical relationships. First, sentence level transitions tend to be small, simple words that signal connections between phrases, clauses, and sentences. Skilled writers use transitions with care, making sure, for instance, not to use consequently when also would be more precise. For consequently signals logic but also indicates simple addition. Second, paragraph level transitions tend to be longer, heavier, more consequential words and usually link the first sentence of a new paragraph with the first sentence of the previous paragraph. In other words, these heavier transitions work at the level of topic sentences, logic, and ideas to signal global connections and coherence in the development of an argument. How do writers create coherence? From my experience as a writer, I recommend three practical tips for creating coherent paragraphs. First, the tip for inventing characters. Decide who your main characters will be in each paragraph, then make these main characters your grammatical subjects of most sentences in each paragraph. Consistent characters help make paragraphs cohesive and coherent in four ways. They create consistent subject topic strings, they link ideas, ideas clearly, they repeat key words, and they create a consistent point of view throughout a passage. Second, the tip for topic sentences. Consider writing out a title for each paragraph to determine its primary topic. Then use that title of your paragraph to write a topic sentence for the paragraph. It's quite simple, but effective. Third, tip for choosing transitions. Consider what sentences do within your paragraphs, such as zoom in to examples to provide evidence, zoom out to make general conclusions, which is a logical function, focus on logical relationships, and so forth. Then signal the functions with simple sentence level transitions or heavy paragraph level or logic level transitions. Apply these tips and you'll create highly readable, coherent paragraphs that make better sense to your readers. We can now integrate the principles of this lesson with prior style lessons. For principles of cohesion and coherence work together with the principles for writing clear sentences, namely, make main character subjects and make important actions verbs. The common syntax of sentences works together with the principles of style. When readers weave style into syntax, they create highly readable sentences that are clear, cohesive, and coherent. You might review this chart or this lesson until you see how the two levels of style work together in the English sentence based on subject, verb, object, syntax. See you at the next style lesson on the topic of creating emphasis.